Unit 5, Trigonometry, Section 5.2, Sine, Cosine, and Tangent Functions. First question I need to ask, is your calculator in degree mode? Your calculator should say someplace on the front screen, it should be DEG. The other options are radians, R-A-D, or gradients, G-R-A, or it might be a D, an R, or a G. Make sure it's in degree mode, not in radian no mode not in gradient mode. If it's in the wrong mode, looking for the button to change it, it's normally listed as DRG. And that is the button that normally switch it into degree mode. So let's have an introduction to the sine, cosine, and tangent trigonometry functions. And from here on in, we'll use their short forms, sine, cos, and tan. I want to remind you, that is sine, don't call it sin, it's sine. All right, let's talk about how to use these functions. You should have a sine, cos, or a tan on your calculators. If you don't, you're going to need to get one with those functions on it. So we never have a sine or a cos all by itself. It's always the sine of something. It's always the cos of something. And it's always the tangent of something. And that something is always going to be an angle in degrees. Right? That's what's always going to go in. You're always going to have a degrees inside those brackets. So it's going to be a sine or a cos or a tan of a degree measure. So let's work through, let's calculate what is the sine of 30 degrees. Well, let's pull out our calculator. Now every calculator does this in a different order. In some cases, you hit the sine button first and then your 30 degrees. In other cases, you type in your 30 degrees and then the sine button. On this calculator, I hit 30 degrees first. I'm going to go into my trig functions and I'm going to hit the sine button. Sine of 30 degrees equals 0 0.5. Got a number other than 0 0.5? Is your calculator in degree mode? If it's not in degree mode, you need to change it, and that's why you're getting something other than 0 0.5. What's the sine of 60 degrees? 60 degrees, go to the trig function, hit the sine button. Oh, look at that. We've got a whole bunch of decimals there. When I write, write down this decimal that comes out of my sine function, let's go with three decimal places. 0 0.866. Let's keep it going. Cos of 30 degrees. So 30 trig cos. Also 0.866. All right. Cos of 60 degrees. 0 0.5. Jump down to tan. Works the same way. Tan of 30 degrees, so I type in my 30, go hit my tan button, 0.577. And tan of 60 degrees, 60, hit my tan button, 1.732. For the record, this number that comes out of the sine and the cos functions will always be less than 1. It's going to be some decimal less than 1. Tangent, not so much. It could very easily be 1 or higher. I just want to remind you, that this piece that is inside of our function is an angle in degrees. So whatever is inside that sine, cos, or tan function will always be an angle. Let's look at this one. This time we're working backwards. That negative one right there means we're doing the inverse of sine. So in this case, we're doing the inverse sine of 0 0.5. So just like a square root is the opposite of a square, Dividing is the opposite of multiplying. The inverse sine is the opposite of a sine function. Let's bring up our calculator. Type in 0 0.5. I'm going to go second function sine. See how my calculator pops up as a sine negative 1? That's the inverse sine. When I took that 0.5 and I went backwards, I ended up with 30. Important note to point out here, when you're doing the inverse, the piece that goes in the brackets, the inverse piece, is not a degree but it spits out 30 degrees. Basically, I'm saying the sine of what angle would give me 30 degrees. So this one spits out an angle, but the inside part is not an angle. Let's keep it going. The inverse sine of 3 quarters. Well, I'm going to rewrite that. I want to work with decimals in this. So we're going to do the inverse sine, 3 quarters. So 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. Bring up my calculator, 0 0.75. Going to trig, I want the second function sine, 48.6, round it off. 
that's an angle, so I'm going to put a little degree symbol on there. Moving on to E and F, I don't have any cos examples, but they're run exactly the same way as the sine and the tan. So turn 23 sevenths into a decimal first. So there's 23 sevenths as a decimal. Notice how if you're working carefully on your calculator, you can keep all of the decimals. So if I just go to second function tan, I end up with 73.1 degrees. And last, what's the inverse tan of 0.3847? Second function tan. One decimal place, 21.0. So that's how to calculate the trig functions and the inverse trig functions.